Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, minister to your people tonight concerning operating in God's timing. Speak to them on tonight. Let lives be changed on tonight. Deliver your people, set them free, give them wisdom, give them knowledge, give them understanding. Be glorified tonight. Bring glory to the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, someone shout a big amen. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus on tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I want you to repeat these words right now. Operating in God's timing. Operating in God's timing. That's the word of God on tonight. Operating in God's timing. Now look, I want to say this as we teach on this on tonight. We, we've been on this subject for the past two weeks during our morning prayer broadcast talking about God's will is working. God's plan is working. Amen. Can someone can someone type those words for me? God's plan is working. We do a morning devotion every morning. That video is released. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, now is a good time. Now is a good time to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click on that subscribe button and also turn on your click on the gray notification bell that would turn it on and every time we upload new videos which we do on a daily basis all year long to bless encourage and motivate God's people they meant to strengthen and feed God's sheep the Lord gave me a word a few years ago and said feed my sheep and he put it in my heart to start a morning prayer broadcast to minister to God's people amen so if you haven't subscribed make sure I click on the subscribe button right now so you will not miss any broadcast if you're watching us through Facebook make sure like us on Facebook if you like us on Facebook make sure your notifications are turned on and every time we upload our morning broadcast on Facebook you will also receive the notification follow us on Pinterest follow us on periscope follow us on twitter and every morning and you can also follow us on instagram as well and every morning when we upload these morning prayer broadcasts you will receive them now let's get ready and go into the word of god so tonight we are talking about operating in god's timing operating in god's timing I want to read this to you first from uh, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes says, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, listen to the word of God. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Watch this now. To everything, absolutely everything, there is a season. And there is a time to every purpose under the heaven. Wow. That means unless it's the right time, unless your timing lines up with God's timing, what you are trying to make happen or what you are trying to make work, it's not going to work you will you will fall flat on your face if you are outside of god's timing if listen 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 to the word now ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 to everything there is a season you know how many you know how much marriage probably sh would would have been better if people would have just waited on god you know how much businesses would have been ran much smoother if that business owner would have just waited on god you know how much ministries could have been much more effective if that man would have not run out or that woman and go start their own thing outside of god's timing are you listening to me it was his purpose all right but they were outside of his timing so therefore god's blessing cannot be on that thing i know what it is to throw my little plans together and ask god to bless it it don't work that way 
<laughs> you got to be in God's timing. You got to be in God's plan. And that's what he will bless. You ain't going to tell God how to run the show. Uh, uh, uh. It does not work that way, friend. Unless the Lord build a house, Psalms 127. Those who labor, th 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 those who labor are laboring in vain. Unless, unless the Lord keeps the city, the watchman is watching but in vain. You got to have God's help. There's a time and a season to every purpose under the heaven. Now watch this. I want to read this to you. Let's go to Psalm chapter 32, verses 8 and 9, and then we're going to look at the Apostle Paul in Acts 16. Let's go into Psalm chapter 32, verses 8 and verses 9. Listen to the word of God. The Lord says, I will instruct thee and teach thee thee or teach you in the way which you shall go man i love the word of god glory to jesus he said i will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go he said i will guide you with my eye <laughs> You, listen now let me just make a confession now. I know my wife's going to my wife's going to enjoy this one I was a mischievous little boy <laughs> Listen, yeah, and then we I had a friend called Mavi. They used to call him Fire. <laughs> I have, if Pastor Ween is watching tonight, that's Pastor Ween's first cousin. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You don't want me and Mavi get together. Lord, have mercy. You talk about can be, can be just mischievous. Listen, and my mama, my mom would guide me with her eye. <laughs> Boy, if I have any family listening to this tonight, they're laughing. My mom could give you a look that will slice you right in half. Boy, look, I mean, just when we were about to do something crazy, my mom would just come around the corner and put her hands in her, and she's a Holy Ghost woman. You don't play with her, boy. She put her hands in her waist, and she would give you a look. <laughs> she didn't even have to talk to me <laughs> or sometimes she did but but on certain occasions she would just give me a certain look and boy I would drop what I was doing and run for cover <laughs> so you know so God have a way of staring you with his eye he has a way of, of guiding you by the Holy Ghost he have a way of letting you know when you are wrong and he also have a way of letting you know when you are right come on talk back to me here so he said I will instruct he said I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go I will guide you with my eye man he promises to guide us he promises to guide us he promised to guide you he promised to lead you you are not here listen you are not out here on your own struggling. The Holy Ghost is with you. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And we know the Holy Ghost is his representative. We know Christ is seated at the right hand of God, but the Holy Ghost lives in us and he lives in us. He is here in the name of Jesus. It's his responsibility. He is here in Christ's stead. Exactly what Jesus was to his apostles, that's who the Holy Ghost is to us. He's here to lead, to guide, direct those who are led by the spirit of god in romans 8 are the sons of god john 16 13 when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth so the lord says i will guide you with my eye he's talking about the holy ghost now watch this listen to verse 9 he said be not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding whose mouth must be held in with a bit and bridle lest they come near unto me lest they come near unto thee he said don't be like the horse why, why is he saying do me like the horse because you know a wild horse they just take off running into any direction with no plan in place they just took off and, and i used to be that wild horse <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Man, I know what it is to take off running many times without any real plan in place. And you, you fall flat on your face because you got ahead of God. Does anyone know what I'm talking about here? So he said, don't be like the horse. The horse is impatient. Man, all he want to do is run. He wants to run. But what the Holy, Ghost, the Holy Ghost wants you to realize is there ain't nothing wrong with running. But before you run, make sure you're in God's timing. Make sure you have God's plan down for your life before you just take off a running and get into a mess have anyone ever took off a running and got yourself into a whole lot of unnecessary trouble some of you dealing with consequences right now because you didn't wait on god now watch this so he said don't be like the horse 
And then he also says, don't be like the mule. Now, what is it about the mule? The horse just, the horse just takes off a running. But what does the mule do? This is what the mule does. Even after the gun goes off, the mule is just still sitting there. <clears throat> and that's some of you tonight. Some of you are like the horse. You're running ahead of God. But then some of you are like the mule. After God speaks to you and give you the instruction, after God speaks to you and give you the instruction, you still sitting there talking about you waiting on God. That's procrastination. And then that's being out of God's timing. Are you listening to me? If the Holy Ghost tell you to go and you talking about, no, I'm just going to wait. I just, I, I'm, I don't think I'm ready yet. I don't think, that's why God got angry at Moses. When, when, when God was calling Moses, Moses said, well, well I, I can't speak. Oh, he was lying. He went to the best school in Egypt. He didn't, he sure did know how to speak, but he, he was just coming up with a excuses don't play with God amen now let's go into the book of Acts chapter 16 as I help you not only understand but see what happens when we operate in God's timing I want you to see one of the greatest benefits of what takes place when we operate in God's timing and I believe the Holy Ghost is working tonight through this message to get some people on track for some of you you need to slow down for some others of you you need to pick up your pace if God's telling you to move now wait a minute I, I got to get that testimony that Martin Gonzalez Martin Gonzalez said God healed Martin Gonzalez said, God heal me tonight. I've been dealing with thyroid problem, swollen for 18 years, but God touched me and healed me. My God, I put my hand over my throat and I felt it. I felt it, I guess, shrinking. Amen. Glory to God. Well, God bless you. God bless you, Martin. You had that problem for 18 years and now you're healed. Oh, come on, somebody. Just give God praise. We go back and teach the word. But we got to give God praise when he do something like that. That's a miracle, man. Only the Lord Jesus can do that. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, let's go back to the word of God here. So, I want to take you now into the book of Acts. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. But I got to teach the word tonight. Listen, I want... I want to draw your attention now over into the book of Acts chapter 16 verses 6 through 12. Acts chapter 16 verses 6 through 12 in the life of the Apostle Paul. And man, I love the Apostle Paul. He also got impatient just like me and a lot of you on here tonight. Glory to God. Listen here. The Apostle Paul said, and, and, and Luke is writing this down, Acts 16, verse 6 through 12. Luke said, now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia. Watch this now. I want you to pay attention to these words here. And were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Now, Paul, he was ready to go to Asia Minor. Now, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, he knew that God had called him to preach the gospel in Asia one day. But Paul just went, Paul was, man, he said, you know what? I need direction from God. And I've learned one thing. You, you, you can't stay a park car or a parked wagon, amen, the thing got to be moving for you to stare it and direct it where it needs to go. So Paul said, hey, let's just head on over to Asia Minor and preach. I know God's got a burden on my heart for those people. Let's just head on over there. But while he tried to go, the Bible says, but he, they were forbidden, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Now, wait a minute here. Wait a minute. What's wrong with preaching the gospel in Asia? There's nothing wrong with preaching the gospel in Asia. But why did the Holy Ghost forbade Paul? The Holy Ghost forbade him because Paul was outside of God's timing. It was not God's timing for the apostle Paul to go to Asia Minor. So the Bible says they were forbidden by the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Now let's look at the word forbidden up because this is going to clarify some things. Because some of you rebuking the devil when it's really not the devil, it's the Holy Ghost trying to slow you down. And we love to blame everything on the devil because it to justify why we are getting ahead of God. Come on, talk back to me here, somebody. Now watch this. So the Bible says they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Now the word forbidden right there, the word forbidden used in Acts chapter 16 verse 6, the word forbidden means to stop. 
It means to prevent. It also means to hinder somebody. <laughs> wow. It also means to keep from. It also means to withstand. It also means to withhold a thing from somebody. It means to, to deny or to refuse somebody a thing. So it was the Holy Ghost hindering Paul. It was the Holy Ghost withstanding Paul. May he close every door in the front of Paul because it was not God's timing for Paul and Luke and his, those the people that work with Paul to go to Asia Minor. God had a timing. You would see as we look into the word, he went two years later and we will see the results of going to Asia in God's timing. So the Holy Ghost had to hinder him. So every hindrance in your life, it's not the devil. Some hindrance in your life, it's God. It's the Holy Ghost slowing you down. It's the Lord slowing you down. Some closed doors, I know you get upset and you cry, big old tears but some of those closed doors ain't the devil it's God directing you and sometimes he got a closed door from you walking into a mess from you walking into destruction are you listening to me some of you I get anxious just like I made a lot of mistakes because I would get upset man I want it now I want it now but if God is not ready for you to get it now he's not gonna give it to you so he will slam every door shut in your face he will hinder you he will cause people to walk away from you people who can help you will not help you when you are outside of God's time and are you listening to me oh I'm talking to somebody tonight I'm talking to someone tonight I'm talking to someone and listen here let's go a little deeper into this now so the Bible says in verse 7 the Bible says after they will come to Mysia they assayed or they tried to go into Bithynia but the spirit suffered them not so we see in verse 6 it was the Holy Ghost that blocked Paul access and now we see in verse 7 it's the Holy Ghost blocking him access. What was God doing in Paul's life in this stage in his life? The Holy Ghost was actually leading Paul by closed doors. Are you hearing me? He would slam that door and so Paul would have to move over here and then he would slam that door and then my God he would have to so God was actually directing the Apostle Paul into his perfect will and his perfect way. Didn't he say that in Psalms 38, 32 verse 8 he said I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go. Now watch the now, so he said they tried to go into Mysia, but the Holy Ghost, they, they tried, when they would come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Holy Ghost would not allow them. So he would not suffer them, is what King James says. The word suffered not means he did not allow. He did not grant them permission. He restrained them. I feel like somebody is in the waiting room. I feel like someone's in the waiting room right now. My God, I would go in that waiting room. We have seven beautiful I mean, we have seven kids, four beautiful daughters, three handsome sons. My God, every time it would be time for my wife to give bread, oh, Lord, I would get so impatient. <laughs> I would be there looking at the machine, telling my wife, you know, when the thing go beep, beep. I said, babes, <clears throat> that's another one coming. You about to feel another, another, uh, what's, what's the word? Help me out contraction. I'm like, there's another one. Oh, that one's big. My wife looked at me and she said, I know. <laughs> My wife said, I'm the one lady. I could feel it. <laughs> so what I did, I shut my mouth and I just look at her and smile and play it humble. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Come on, man. So so what was what, what was happening is I would get impatient because I want to see this next kid, man. But I couldn't you couldn't make it happen before the time. Are you listening to me? I said you couldn't you just gotta wait until the time when the babies I mean the doctor can break the baby's water, but you know some of them kids are stubborn. They ain't coming out until they're ready. My the the doctor would say, push, 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 my God. And here comes a yelling, screaming, squealing, handsome boy, a beautiful baby girl. You know what I'm talking about, ladies. <laughs> now watch this. So the Bible says the Holy Ghost hindered Paul twice and slammed doors shut in his face twice. Now you know if the Holy Ghost can slam doors in the Apostle Paul's face, what do you think about you and I? Oh, of course he's leading us by closed doors and open doors. Now watch this. And so the Bible says in verse 8, And they passing by Mysa 
came to Troas. I love this. Here comes the green light. Everybody said, here comes the green light. Watch this. And the Bible says in verse 9, after, after God slammed the door shut in Paul's face twice, verse 9 said, when they passed by Mysia and came to Troas, a vision appeared to Paul in the night. Glory to God. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia. <laughs> Didn't I tell you that when we read Philippians 4? That we're going to come back to it. Uh, there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed and said to Paul, come over into Macedonia and help us. Now this was God's green light. God had to get Paul settled down. God had to wait till this man was knocked out sleeping and then speak. Speak to him because sometimes when you knock out sleeping, you're not as busy, you're not as active, and we are much more open to hear the voice of God. So he had to speak to the apostle Paul in a vision and said, the open door is Macedonia. Macedonia is the green light. That's where I want you to go and preach the gospel. And I love verse 10. Verse 10 says, and after he had seen the vision, immediately, watch this now. Oh, glory to God. Excuse me. So the apostle Paul said, and Luke's writing this, he said, and after he had seen the vision, immediately we, we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Now, why would Luke said we endeavored to go? He said we, because the apostle Paul shared, shared his vision with them. These were his trusted confidant. These were his people in his inner circle so he shared what God spoke to him and he wanted to know do you think this is God Luke said Paul this is God we got two red lights and now God's giving you a green light let's go to Macedonia this is God's will all the so they all were in agreement in the multitude of counselors there is safety don't be a know-it-all don't think that you can hear God so good that you don't need counsel that you don't need people in your life to help advise you that is the biggest error in the body of Christ oh I know ought to be led by the spirit i don't need no one to tell me good luck that's unscriptural because the bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established you know i, I listen to some people who say oh this is what god's telling me to do and you know it ain't god they're just talking out of their head they just conjure something up because they want to do what they want to do listen don't play them kind of game saints let's wait on god they that wait on the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not get weary they shall walk and not faint david said wait i say on the lord wait on the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart wait i say on the lord my god we're talking about operating in god's time and now watch this so Luke said in verse 11, therefore loosing from Troas, we came with we came with a straight course to Samothracia and the next day to Neapolis, verse 12, and from there to Philippi. That's, the, that's where he established the Philippian church, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. They were there for a while. And that's when the jail... Thing happened there where God rocked the whole jailhouse when they locked Paul up. God broke the shackles off of him, knocked the prison doors open. The jailer got saved and the Philippian church was established beginning with some of those prison inmates right there. The Philippian church and these were the people who were the first group of people to support the apostles Paul's ministry and to stand with him and to become his partners who stood with him year in and year out, day in and day out, week in and week out month in and month out so that he can travel and preach the gospel so when god tells you to go somewhere you better wait on god and you better wait on him let him do it so because paul obeyed god <clears throat> excuse me because paul moved in god's timing guess what that church was the that was the first group of people 
who he, who he led to Christ, disciple, taught them the word, and they became his number one allies and supporters in the work of God. Look at God, because he, he operated in God's timing. He allowed God to slam doors in his face. When God slammed it on, don't sit there, keep beating your head on the door. Come on, saints, move on. There's an open door somewhere else. So he slammed two doors shut in Paul's face, and then he opened the door to Macedonia. And look at the results of what took place in Macedonia. I mean, great things happened, miracles happened, glory to God. Now I want you to see how Paul, two years, I mean, several years later, it would be three chapters later in Acts chapter 19, now it was time where Paul can go to Asia Minor to preach the gospel and watch what took place. This is Acts chapter 19, verses 9 through 10. 12. Listen to this. I'm teaching tonight, saints. Listen to the word of God. They said, but when many people, when many people's hearts were hardened and believed not, and this is not, this is not the Philippian people now. This is another city where Paul is, but spoke evil of the gospel. Paul departed from them and separated the disciples. And he was disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Listen to verse 10. Verse 10 said, and this continued by the space of two years so that all they which dwelled in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, both Jews and Greeks. So when God opened the door for the apostle Paul to go and preach the gospel in Asia Minor, guess what? Within two years, the end. Higher Asia Minor heard the word of the Lord Jesus Christ because Paul went, my God, my God, because Paul went to Asia Minor in God's timing. He reached those people much quicker with the gospel because when he went, he went in God's time and he experienced supernatural success. This is where some of the greatest miracles took place in the Apostle Paul's ministry. Look at what the Bible says about this trip that he went in God's timing and in God's, in God's will and in God's plan. Listen to what the Bible says in verse 11. The Bible says, and God wrought special miracles. He wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Listen to this. This is the only place recorded in the New Testament. This is the only place recorded in the New Testament where the Bible uses the word special miracles. And God worked special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them this is the only place in the bible where the bible calls it special miracles because the apostle paul he operated in god's timing he allowed the holy ghost to slam doors in his face he allowed the holy ghost to tell him no because when god closes one door he has something better waiting on you my friend man the holy ghost is talking to some people on tonight when he did go to asia minor he went in god's time and the bible says the whole of asia minor heard the word of god the middle east Turkey, all of those places, Syria, that within two years, Paul's message had reached all of those people. Within two years, without the internet, without a cell phone, without a plane, man, come on, without a speedboat, they, he preached the gospel and reached all of them people in two years. And the Bible says in Asia Minor, God worked special miracles by the hands of Paul. When you operate, when you operate in God's timing, in his plan, and in his purpose, God will work special miracles. He will work special miracles. My God, you move mountains. Listen to me. Who would say on tonight, 
talking to you saints first who would say tonight pastor you were talking to me now I'm understanding why certain things didn't work out now I'm understanding why God had to excuse me now I'm understanding why God had to close those certain doors now I realize it was God it wasn't the devil I thought it was the devil but now I realize it's God He's slowing me down it's God slowing me down so I could operate in his timing God is saving me from a whole lot of trouble come on talk back to me who would say pastor you talking to me tonight now I see what's happening in my life God is keeping me in his timing he's keeping me inside his perfect will for my for my life the Bible says and we know that all things we know that all things it works together for good to those who love God to them who are called according to his purpose can someone lift your hands to heaven and say God's plan is working his plan is working say say it. God's plan is working type them out in caps all caps God's plan is working oh it's working his plan is working for you right now mighty God there is nothing there is nothing that's impossible that's impossible and we're standing mighty God and you move mountains you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible sing it to him and we're standing here only because you made a way sing it to him you made a way sing it to him church you made a way and we're standing here tonight and we're standing here and you move mountains and you move mountains and you cause walls to fall with your power let's shift give him glory glory to God Come on, sing it with me on tonight. Give him glory. Sing it. Give him glory. Give him. God's going to get it. Sing it, church. God's going to get the glory out of this. Those closed doors was the Holy Ghost. So give him glory. Give him. Give him glory. Give him glory. God's gonna get the glory out of this. Every door he had to shut in my face. Just give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. See you, church. God's gonna get glory. Out of this. Listen, I want to join my faith with you and pray for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith with your people on tonight. Those who have been experiencing closed doors, those who have been hindered by the Holy Ghost, not the enemy. God, you are the one leading them. You are the one guiding them. You are the one directing them. You said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way you are leading your people you said those who are led by the spirit of god are the sons of god and it's not our will but it's your will we want can someone just say not my will but your will be done
Can someone say, not my will, but your will be done? Just type it. Say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Give him glory. Give him. God's going to get it. Sing it. God's going to get the glory out of this. Come on and sing it to him. Just give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. God's going to get the glory out of this. I surrender all. Listen. The most important part of any service we have is to open the doors of the body of Christ and to give someone who is not saved an opportunity to surrender their life to Jesus. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He loves you tonight with an everlasting love. If you have never surrendered your life to Jesus or you are backsliding away from the Lord, tonight is your night to make things right with God. The Bible says he is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness without any hesitation here. I want you to pray this prayer after me, you who have not surrendered your life to Jesus. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner on tonight. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on Calvary Cross. I believe you shed your blood for my sins. I'm asking you tonight to forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me in your blood on tonight. Wash me, Lord. Wash me clean inside out. I believe they buried you in a borrowed tomb. And I also believe on the third day God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand. And soon and very soon you are coming again. Lord Jesus, from this night moving forward, I turn my back. I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil to serve the true and living God and his Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul and writing my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Listen here, friend, if you prayed that prayer with me, your sins have been forgiven. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Let me and Pastor Amy be the first to say to you, welcome into the kingdom of God. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Today marks the day of a new beginning in your life. The old chapter is closed. Your sins are forgiven. They are washed away. He don't cover it. He washes them away in his blood. Your sins are forgiven. Welcome into the kingdom of God. Listen, if you just surrender your life to Jesus, I want you to type below this video right now, I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. We want to give a shout out to you and welcome you into the kingdom of God. Sing it. And I surrender all, all to thee and all to thee my blessed should save you I surrender if you just surrendered your life to Christ I want you to type in the live chat right now I've just surrendered my life to Jesus we want to give a shout out to you the Bible says Jesus said if you be ashamed of me and of my words down here on this earth he said I'll be ashamed of you when you stand before my father and the holy angels all to thee my Blessed Savior, sing it to him. And I surrender. Withholding nothing, sing it to him. Withholding nothing, sing it to him. God bless you, Pearl. God bless you, Agatha. God bless you, Paula. Mighty God, God bless you. 
Aisha, God bless you. A lot of people. Samantha, God bless you. Daniel, God bless you. Welcome into the kingdom. God bless you. I see those surrenders on tonight. Hannah, God bless you. Barbara, God bless you. Audrey, God bless you. Sing it tonight. Withholding nothing. Withholding. Withholding nothing. God bless you, Kathy. I surrender all. Sing it to him. And I surrender all to you. God bless you, Congeta. Everything, everything I give to you. Rule, God bless you. Sing it. Withholding nothing. Withholding, withholding nothing. Sing it to him. Withholding nothing. God bless you, Lorna. Your sins are forgiven, I surrender. I surrender. God bless you, Joyce. God bless you, Yannette. God bless you, Jaden. God bless you, Aurelis. Come on, saints. Welcome them into the kingdom on tonight. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. God bless you, Edda. Welcome into God's kingdom on tonight. Withholding nothing. Withholding I surrender all, and I surrender. God bless you, Savas. Welcome into God's kingdom tonight. Welcome into his family on tonight. Christine, God bless you. Vanessa, God bless you. Welcome into the kingdom of God. Lorraine, welcome into God's kingdom. Anne Marie, welcome into the kingdom of God on tonight. Withholding. Withholding. We say yes. Sing it. And we say yes. Tell the Lord yes on tonight. Yes. Tell him yes. Yes. Lord. Udrawadi. God bless you. God bless you, Vilma. God bless you, Hope. Many saints. Shruti, God bless you. Welcome into the kingdom. God bless you. People are coming into God's kingdom. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. We say yes. We say yes. And we say yes. Tell him yes tonight. <laughs> oh, listen, listen to me. Heaven, heaven is heaven is throwing a party tonight. You know. I love seeing people heal, and we always will, because Jesus is a healer. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the greatest part of any service we can have is when people get saved and surrender their hearts and lives to the Lord Jesus. Tell him yes. <clears throat> withholding. Withholding nothing. 